friends and fellow Californians. For three and a half years now, America has been bogged down in a war in the sands of Iraq. A new report by the United Nations tells us there is more torture in Iraq today than there was under Saddam Hussein. According to news accounts, a new national intelligence estimate concludes that the war in Iraq is hurting us in the broader war against terror, serving to stir up radicalism and terror across this globe. And then there is the fact that it is not so new. 275 Californians have died in Iraq, men and women who paid the ultimate price for faulty intelligence and a failed foreign policy, including 21 members of our state's National Guard. No other state in this nation has given so many of its best. I've been playing about my views on George W. Bush's war in Iraq. It is wrong for our country and wrong for the Californians who are fighting and dying there. It is compromising our national security and winning us enemies when we need allies in the war against terror. George Bush's war is maiming our conscience as a nation, as well as our young men and women in uniform. And I say to each and every one of you, my fellow Californians, it is long past time to bring our troops home. Of course, governors do not set foreign policy. And my opponent, Arnold Schwarzenegger, has already suggested that my views on this conflict don't belong in this race for governor. But perhaps he has forgotten about the bully pulpit in his own prodigious use of us when he repeatedly told Californians that George Bush's decision to invade Iraq was making us safer. Perhaps he has forgotten that in the final days of the 2004 election, he went as our sitting governor to campaign for President Bush in Ohio, the state that turned the election and has kept our catastrophic Iraq policy on life support. Well, Governor, that's where you and I disagree. Continuing a war that had no rationale, that drains our strength to meet the real security threats and has no exit strategy is the wrong thing to do for America and California. George Bush and Dick Cheney led us into this war on a false pretext. There were no weapons of mass destruction and no evidence of Saddam Hussein's support for al-Qaeda or the terrible 9-11 attacks. The titles of the history of this war tell it all. Fiasco, blind into Baghdad, hubris, how American incompetence created a war without end. But that's not the only reason I'm here today. Because you see, a governor's first responsibility is to ensure the safety of the people of California. And a governor cannot do that without a strong National Guard. The Guard, our crucial defense against domestic disorder and natural disaster, has been called for extended and repeated tours of combat in Iraq. Since 9-11, 9,000 members of our California Guard have been deployed overseas, mostly to Iraq. These tours are exacting a tremendous cost on the Guard. Our Guard has fallen 20% below its authorized strength. As fewer members re-enlist and fewer Californians sign up, one can hardly blame them. And it's about to get worse. President Bush has stretched our forces so thin, there aren't enough combat-ready units to sustain operations in Iraq. Newly published reports over the weekend indicate that Pentagon officials are looking to fill the gap after the November election by calling even more heavily on the Guard, further degrading its ability to meet our security needs at home. Think about it for a moment. This fool's errand overseas isn't just breeding more terror and torture in Iraq. It's also hurting us here in the golden state we love. As a nation, we have spent nearly $400 billion of our wealth 
on the war in Iraq, money that should have been spent securing our borders against those who would attack us, tracking down terrorist cells, inspecting the cargo containers that pour through our ports every day, not to speak of educating our children and providing health care to the sick. When a shameful and phony war compromises the governor's basic ability to meet the needs of our people, when it puts us at greater risk of injury and fatality when a disaster strikes our state, then you better believe it's an issue in the race for the governor of the state of California. Yeah. And what does Governor Schwarzenegger say about pressure the war has put on our precious citizen soldiers, on their readiness for earthquake, flood, and fire? Quote, I'm not concerned about that, he said. Well, I am, and so are the people in this room, and so are the people of California. And that's why I say to you today that as governor of the state of California, I will do everything in my power to bring our state's National Guard troops home from Iraq. On day one, on day one, I will put in a formal request to President Bush to return our National Guard units to California. I will mobilize governors from across this nation to force a change in national policy so guard units can be used for their intended purpose, protecting our homeland, not propping up the Bush-Cheney runfield excuse for a foreign policy. I will ask you to join me in walking the halls of Congress to mobilize support for a new direction in Iraq, one that brings our troops home and turns our strength and resources to the real task of truly rooting out and defeating the terror that threatens us. including going to court to return our guards, men and women, to California. And I want to tell you something here. I will do something that Arnold Schwarzenegger cannot even pretend that he will do. I will join with you in working my heart out to elect a Democratic president in 2008 who will end this war in Iraq. Put in place a national security policy built on evidence and facts, not deception and bravado. A president who will wage a real war against global terror. I have the greatest respect for the courage and sacrifice of our troops in Iraq. I didn't serve in the armed forces. I finished college just after America ended its involvement in the Vietnam War. But I learned the importance of service and sacrifice at home from my father, who was with me earlier today in San Francisco. He flew in B-29s in the Pacific Theater in World War II. From him, I learned about wartime leaders who told the truth about the difficulties ahead, who gathered the whole strength of our nation behind the men and women who risked everything on the battlefield to protect our families and our freedoms who honored their sacrifice when they returned home, and who held Pentagon officials accountable by firing those who failed the troops on the front line. If you elect me as your governor, I will not forget what my father taught me. As a citizen and a leader of this great state, I will do my part each and every day to end George Bush's failed adventure in Iraq. I will stand behind our troops, and I will fight with you to bring our National Guard home to fulfill their true mandate, protecting our families here at home. Join with me in this fight, and together we can make California safe and prosperous so all our people can live out their dreams. Thank you. Let's fight, and let's bring our troops home. Thank you very, very much.